I would characterize Alfred Russell Wallace as a Victorian Indiana Jones. Um, here was a man who spent four years in uh, the Amazon River Basin and the Rio Negro. He spent eight years in the Malay Archipelago where he uh, investigated and made naturalistic discoveries in, in uh, scores and scores of islands in that, in that island chain. He's a dramatic figure, an interesting figure. Uh, he's a figure who, who lived amongst the people uh, of those native environments. And so he came away with a very distinctive perspective on indigenous cultures and indigenous people. He had a love of science, a passion for discovery in nature. If a question was not answered sufficiently, he kept burrowing further until he came to a satisfactory conclusion. Uh, the most obvious trait in Alfred Wallace uh, is his, his passion for inquiry and to know the truth. Alfred Russell Wallace was the co-discoverer of natural selection. He was the author of one of the most important um, scientific discovery narratives in the English language, the Malay Archipelago in 1869. In 1876, he was the author of the geographical distribution of animals, which made him widely regarded as the father of modern biogeography. And he is the architect of intelligent evolution. Wallace's theory of intelligent evolution was a belief in common descent that was directed, that was detectably designed and purposeful. Wallace's view of evolution differed from Darwin's in that Wallace's view actually restricted the operations of natural selection. There were three things that natural selection took for Wallace could not explain. It could not explain the origin of life. It could not explain sentience in animals, consciousness. And it could not explain the mind of man. The operations he called upon for that, he called variously by different names, an overruling intelligence, a supreme mind. The idea he, is he was calling upon an intelligent cause to explain those three features of the natural world. Alfred Russell Wallace anticipated the modern intelligent design movement by selecting certain features of nature that gave evidence of design, the cell, uh, the bird's wing, and by contextualizing his analysis of nature apart from methodological naturalism. Alfred Russell Wallace's greatest legacy to science is to give us a different view and a different perspective of what science is and how science should function and operate. That legacy that Wallace gave us, unfortunately, has largely been forgotten.